Now let's go for another thing we can do with the same technique. To follow my workshop, you can download my workflow on OpenArt. You see here there's a download button and above that you have a green button that says launch workflow where you can actually run my workflow in the cloud for free. When you click on that button, it takes a little while and then it's opening up this window. As you can see here, everything I've built for you is in here. You don't have to download or install anything. This is completely prepared for you. Again, we're going to the group we want to use here and we right click and then set group notes to always so that everything is active in here. And as you can already see, because now you are experienced with these workflows, we have basically the same build. We have our checkpoint, the two prompts in here. We have here our image that we are loading and then we are going into the case sampler and we're creating an image over here. Now, what is the difference in this case? Well, actually, when we zoom in here, you can see I load an image, has a very long name here. This is an image that I have created with Mid Journey. You can see that it looks pretty cool. Very nice robot here standing in a city, but you can actually use any kind of image that you have created. You'll find online any kind of information, even sketches, doodles, whatever you want. So let's scroll out here again. And you can see here, I'm using a different node. This is called image resize. In this case, what I'm doing here is I'm resizing this to a width of 768 and a height of 512. I'm doing an interpolation here and then keep proportions in this case so that we have the same proportion. So you can see here again, I'm doing some probing over here by sending this to a preview so I can actually see what I get from that. And then, of course, we are going to send this image into our VAE encode and then it's going to go into our case sampler as a latent input. Let's have a quick look here at our prompt. I'm writing here giant battle Mac city in background masterpiece best quality. So now let's click here on the Q prompt and see what happens. So you can see here the image has been resized. The rendering is going on and out comes this image here. So that's already pretty cool. You can see we get here a different robot, but it's still similar to our input image. Of course, the reason for that is that in this case, we have set our denoise to only 0.3. And that means it takes a lot of the original image into consideration. But at the same time, when we look here, we still get a lot of variation from that. So that means we can have the same artistic style and colors in here and the same composition, but we can create variations from that. Let's hit the cue prompt again and see what we are going to get next. And there it is. It's already finished. You can see it has changed a little bit from our robot. Of course, you can also set the denoise higher if you want to, to get even more variation in here. So here we have another variation that is also based on the same denoise. I'm going again to our image resize. Now I'm setting this to 512 and now I'm setting this part to 768. And in this case, we are also going to turn off key proportion. So click here. So this says false. And now we are getting an image that is vertical instead of horizontal. So you can see here from our image, this has actually been squished into that space. Let's set the denoise value instead of 0 0.3 to 0 0.5. And as you can see, the output has considerably changed. Now we have a battle mech that is actually a lot more humanoid, has a lot of like a backpack or a weapon on there. We have nice details down on the street and the overall composition with the buildings is different. But at the same time, that is really beautiful. But I also want to show you an alternative workflow that is basically using the same technique, but it adds an additional level of control and depth to it. Now, this workflow is actually kind of a magical machine to get creative outputs from a single image input. You don't even need to write a prompt. So let's inspect this workflow closer. What I have here again is my checkpoint that is loading. 
But now you can see that over here for my prompt, I actually have an empty box in here. And then here I have my negative prompt. Now, why is this box empty? The reason for that is because I converted the text box, which is called a widget inside of ConfuI Notes into an input. The way you can do that is by right clicking on the note and then looking for the input you want to create. You can see down here it says convert text to input. If I click on that, the output is going to be a note like this where we don't have a text field, but instead we have here a text input. Now here's the reason why we need a text input. Here we are again loading the image and here I have a note that is called the VD14 tagger. And this will actually analyze the image. It will look at it and it will turn it into a text prompt. And you can actually see the text prompt down here as a preview. It says outdoor multiple boys night glowing robot ground vehicle building scenery mecha motor vehicle science fiction city car police lamp post lights searchlight. So there's a lot of information in here about what is found in the image and this is created automatically for you. Now personally I want to have a little bit more control over how the output is going to look. So I add another node here. This is called a string function. Now what this is doing is it can combine a prompt that is coming in with other prompts that you're writing here. Usually you have here three text fields and a preview field. But as you can see up here, I have converted this area for text A into an input. Again, the way to do this is right click on the node, look down here to convert and look for the input you want to create. It says here text B and text C because I have already converted text A into an input. So as you can see what's happening here is this output from the VD14 tagger is becoming our text A in here and then followed by text B. In text B, I'm writing style of concept art, masterpiece, digital painting, facing viewer. And down here in the preview, you can actually see that this part that I'm suggesting is at the end of our prompt. So all of that information is now going into our positive prompt and then into the case sampler. Again, as you can see also with the image, I'm using the image resize to squish that together in a vertical format and then VAE encode it into a latent image. Both the text prompt that is created from the image as well as the image itself is going into our case sampler here as information for the AI to render. And then of course it's simply rendered via VAE decode into the actual image. And now look at this amazing output. We have here a humanoid mecha that is standing in a city street, a really big mecha. We even have your person walking down here on the ground. And every time, of course, I click here on Q prompt, this is creating a different variation of this image here. So here we have another variation with the Mecca and here we have yet another variation of our Mecca again. One thing to also point out here is that in this case, because I want to give the AI a lot of freedom, is that I'm using denoise of 0.78. This is also possible in that case because we also have the text input to give us additional information of what we want to have in our image. Now at the beginning of explaining this workflow, I called it magical. And here's the reason why I did that. Let's go to our image loader, click here, and then I'm loading this image here where we have a guy with a brown jacket standing in a landscape. I'm not going to change anything, not the prompt, not the settings, nothing. I'm only loading this image and then clicking on Q prompt. And look at that. We have as an output a guy in a brown jacket standing in a landscape, but it is a different image. We have created a variation of this in a very similar style with the same elements in there. How amazing is that? Thanks for watching this part of my workshop. There's a lot more you can do with the latent input and I invite you to experiment a lot more with that. Also watch out for my other workshop videos. 
Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.